ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله ولا صحبه ولا اجمعين اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم indeed the praise is for allah and therefore we praise him we seek allah's help exclusively and we seek allah's forgiveness and we seek refuge with allah from the evil which emanates from within and the harm thereof i give open testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship but allah highly glorified is he he has no partner in the dominion of his creation we give further testimony that muhammad to whom the quran was revealed is his servant and messenger peace and prayers be on him and on his family his companions and all those who gather in righteousness and what follows thereafter i mean amen o you who believe have taqwa for allah as it is his right to receive taqwa and die not except as muslims surely allah speaks the truth assalamu alaikum we pray uh, we make dua often we ask that allah not to place a burden on us greater than we have the capacity to bear not to place a burden like that was that which was placed on those who came before us right we do this often matter of fact this is uh, from so so bakara and immediately before that allah tells us said allah does not place a burden on any person greater than they have the capacity to bear so even after hearing this the response is please include us in that allah do not place on us a burden that's greater than we have the capacity to bear so even as we are in this moment of this inclement weather we ask that this not be greater than we have the capacity to bear and this should also sensitize us it should sensitize sensitize us number one to recognize the blessings that allah has given us and sensitize us to recognize that there are those who do not have the same who do not enjoy the same blessings the same protections now is that a permanent state of being or is that a call to action is that a call is that reality something that should strike uh, a nerve in us is it something that should kind of get the get the blood boiling right move us to action we are indeed in a very interesting time to be in this day uh where we've got wind chills which are i think some of them are like 20 degrees below or i heard somebody say 30 below and all across the country is a very unique space of time that we're in where we're all sharing in this this bitterness of cold and it happens at a time where the sensitivities the sentiments of of the of the nation are usually warming up and by that i mean the things that people would walk by or ignore outside of the the holiday season right the christmas season which is a time when people say goodwill towards all peace towards all and you know want to be more charitable and you know for us that's just a friday right that's just a tuesday right this this is what we are muslims we are sensitized or we try to be sensitized to consider what law tells us to consider our wealth and to consider those who ask to consider the one who does not have as having a right having rights towards what we have so we don't we don't have to wait for a particular time of year a particular season but we understand that this season is different in that the the human sensitivities of people are being warmed up and people are paying more attention towards opportunities for acts of charity they're paying more attention towards their their mannerism they're paying more attention to to guarding their tongue right those who are really trying to embody what this spirit right what it what it is marketed as right for those who see it and they say well i want to be the best person that i can be during this time of year because this is a festive time of year but we're reminded of something we're reminded of the impact of the cold 
and what cold does to the body. And what cold does to the body is very similar to what the cold wind also does to the spirit. So the cold is painful. It has a painful element to it, right? At first, it has a painful element. It's, it, it, it causes discomfort to skin, the, the extremities get to tingling, right? It's something that, you know, you don't want to be in. You, you want warmth. But prolonged exposure, it leads to a point where you lose sensitivity in those extremities. What was painful to you before is no longer, no longer bothers you. It's not, a, it's not a concern. It's not an issue. And likewise, with our human sensitivities, the things that allow us to connect with other human beings, allow us to recognize the, the, the plight, allow us to recognize the, uh, the bounty that Allah has given us and recognize that there's a, there is a right, there is a need for that bounty to be, to be shared. And also for the, for it, it has also sensitized us to, to respect, to protect the rights of other human beings, of creation even. But those cold winds, when they come, is painful at first. And we see this in our children. We see the pain of when they recognize, you know, you take, I remember, you know, being out with my daughters when they were little. And their response to uh, to homelessness, their response to uh, seeing people who were obviously impoverished is not, is not the same response in general of the adult, the person who has dealt with that, uh, have, has dealt with that discomfort, has dealt with that, that, that social coldness, and they have become somewhat immune to it. For the child, that, that, that prickles at them, that, that bothers them. Now, I remember my youngest she would take, she had like three, three or four dollars. And I don't, I don't remember where she even got her three or four dollars from. But I remember her going past a, uh, well, on multiple occasions. But I remember her going past, she saw a little spot where charity was being accepted, donations. And she took her little money out of her pocket, stopped, went back, and put her money in there. Right? I, I, I recall going past people, us driving past people. You know, the people that we just... We judge them by their presentation, right? The law judges them by their intention, understanding how they got to where they are, right? But we judge people upon their presentation. The younger, the less sensitized or the less desensitized you are, you're not really thinking in those terms. She sees somebody asking for money and she's like, hold on, hold on, dad, stop. And she reaches in. She's not working at this point. And I should ask, wait, where you get this money from? But she's, she, she wants to give. She wants to support. That's the, warmth, that's the warmth of spirit. That's the human sensitivities being engaged, right? Being connected. But what happens to us as we get older, as we become more and more uh, comfortable with being uncomfortable, we get to the point where we lose those sensitivities. We lose those, lose those sensitivities, and we we don't find the uh, we, we're not distressed. We're not distressed by being in a society where there are such there's so many examples of extreme wealth, yet extreme poverty at the same time. It doesn't cause a sense of distress that a mere five miles from here, five six miles from here, there's a tent city. People living out, outdoors, braving the cold. But yet we have empty, we have vacant properties. We have properties staying vacant. We have people who have been kicked out of their homes. And no one bats an eye. No one is discomfited. But yet here we are, we find ourselves in the season, the season fulfilling where we warm back up, right? People warm back up and the things that did not bother them before, now these are, these are things that are on people's minds. This is also a point in time where Allah has given us this great occasion for us to reflect upon the blessing that he's given us. And the blessing is in 
the example, the example of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as represented in the ascension. And this is important, the Miraj. It's important that we think about this during this time, especially because as many of our relatives, our co-workers, neighbors are celebrating this Christmas season. And they're also celebrating, they're calling and thinking back on Christ on MB peace. It is important for us to understand the blessing of correction that we have been given. Now, before I speak a little bit about this ascension, I have to remind us of something that Imam, uh, Imam Muhammad, uh, Warkadi Muhammad, Allah, Allah have mercy on him, that he spoke about, he talked about the cross as a representation as a representation of uh, uh, vertical life and, and horizontal life, right? There's the life that we live that is on a linear path, and then there's a life that we are reaching up. There's a life where, where, where generation after generation uh, precedes itself, reproduces itself, and then there's also the life that, that is elevated, the cultivated life. And we're probably gonna have to come back to this. Right? I think it's probably more so of a Talim topic, but I just want to, I want to give this for consideration, just for reflection. The irony where Allah tells us to not take those uh, as protectors, those who, oh, you believe, do not take those who ridicule your faith, who mock your faith, do not take them as your, as your awliya, as your, as your protectors or your, or your friends. I right? don't take them. Simply look at how within the season and look at how the cross itself has been used as a, as, as, a, as a theory of binding people, binding people to understand that the idea of being bound to a cross, unable, unable to move, whether, whether uh, vertically or horizontally, right, the complete immobilization of your life, your physical life and your spiritual life. And then consider the ascension. Consider the ascension, Prophet Muhammad, Allah's peace and prayer be upon him, how he was able to move from one location to another location and how he was able to ascend into the heavens. So there's, a, there's this, this linear movement and then there is the ascending. There's the vertical movement as well. And what is, what is the blessing in this for us? The blessing in this for us is that we are not bound. We should not see ourselves bound to simply, uh, 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 in a geographical sense, we should not see ourselves bound earthly. We're reminded that everything that we do, it is for, for what? It is about the ascension. It is about eventually ascending. It's about ascending into, into what? Into the gender, into the garden. So as I say, there's, there's, there's more, and I know, um, yeah, likely we'll have to represent that as a, as, as a tally where we can go into that uh, with more depth. But bringing that back to this particular time and how we look to be uh, sensitized and protect that sensitivity, there are two ways. One of the ways that came from the uh, ascension, the uh, Miraj, was what? That Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he came back with what? He came back with the institution of Salah. He came back with prayer. So without even going back through the uh, the number, how we went from 50 all the way back down to five, the point was we were given, we were given an institution that allows us to protect our human sensitivities. We were given an institution and a practice that allows us to cultivate. Uh, virtue. It allows us to cultivate connection. And in speaking of this, I'm reminded of a uh, hadith from uh, uh, Sahih, it's a Sahih uh, hadith from uh, Bukhari, Radi Allahu An, may Allah be pleased with him, where it's reported that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he said that the one who practices good manners attains, I'm paraphrasing, attains the same level of virtue as the one who spends his nights in prayer. The one who practices good manners, he, he uh, has a capacity to maintain, to, uh, uh, to, to, to gain the same virtue as the one who spends their nights 
in prayer. This is this is tremendously important for us in this season of, of rewarming. Because we should be, number one, we should always be looking at ourselves in comparison to, in contrast to, how are we in alignment and how are we different? So in this time where some are celebrating this goodwill towards, you know, towards mankind, we're reminded of what? That we, we, uh, we, we praise Allah, right? From, uh, so to uh, Nisad, the first ayah speaks, oh, you who believe. Have talked about your Lord who's created you from a single soul. Created you from a single soul. Right? And the population of, of humanity comes from that. So we've, we've been on this and we've been aware and sensitized to this particular, to this thought, to this idea, this concept of having goodwill towards mankind. The law says, said, we did not create you. Uh, we pray that you have different tribes for the purpose of what? That you may know one another. I believe that's from uh, sort of, so, uh, the heights, the, the seventh uh, uh, sort of. It says we pray that you with, from different tribes, different customs, different uh, expectations and experiences, histories, and all so that you would know one another, not to despise one another. So this is not new thinking for the Muslim. The Muslim, you know, idea okay goodwill towards everybody well we got will goodwill to all those all those who are uh, the, the entire human family we only have we only got problems with those who got problems uh, with us we only have problems with those who want to cover up truth we only have problems with those who want to oppress people we only have problems with those who want to keep people in a cold and an unfeeling state that is who we got problems with we don't have a problem with humanity, right? We're champions of humanity. We're champions of humanity. So in this, in this season, this time that we are in, it's important for us to remember the blessing that Allah has given each of us. And I want to make one more reference towards, uh, I mentioned the, the cross, um, but at the outset, I brought us back to uh, uh, the ayah, where the, the dua we make often, all uh, you know, we have, our Lord did not place on us a burden greater than we have capacities to bear, right? Allah says, oh, no soul does he place a burden greater than it has a capacity to bear. But it does also mean that whatever the, the, the burden of the believer is obedience. And that's not in a negative way. It's a responsibility, but it's a burden. It's something, it's something to witness, to look at people who can be open disputed, be openly, uh, openly reject faith, who can openly do all types of uh, terrible things and, and look like they sleep. They sleep really good. Like they got no problems. They have no problem. They, their consciousness is not bothering them. Right? But they're doing horrible things. They're promoting horrible ideas. And it doesn't seem like they're bothered at all. That's a person, that is a person, that is a person who has a seal placed on their heart. Right? The believer, but we think about what is the, the, the true burden of belief? Well, if you will, for lack of a better word, the burden of belief for the believer is so much higher because disobedience comes at such, it's such a, a greater cost. As a Muslim, as a believer, when you are disobedient, when you fall outside of the lines of, of what you know Allah is pleased with, it does something to you. It does something to the soul. It puts you in that same state that Adam alayhi salam was in. It puts you in a state where you are, you are grieving. You are grieving and you're feeling a, 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 a pull at that connection. You're feeling that connection being, being severed. You, you feel that how the, the, the sensitivities that you have, the direction that your life is supposed to be, you feel, you feel a shift in that. And for the believer, that is one of the most uncomfortable, if not, that's the most un uncomfortable thing in the world. Being conscious of Allah and knowing that you are not listening to Allah. Remembering Allah and knowing that you are not doing what, what does the believer always say? Right? We hear and we obey. We hear where we respond. 
So, so that's, that's the, uh, the package of belief. And that's what each of us carries, right? We carry, we carry our, our, our horizontal and our vertical life. We carry responsibility for that, for moving that forward. And we don't allow ourselves to be made a mockery of. We don't allow ourselves to be fixed in place to be of those who, who die from stagnation. We don't allow ourselves to be of those people who become unfeeling, right? Their, their discomfort that was initial at the outset, they don't even have it anymore. They've been in the cold so long. They've been, they have been moving for so long that they can't, they can't feel their fingers. They can't feel their faces. They can't even speak. They're not in pain, but they're not productive. They're not moving. They can't do anything. So we want to stay sensitized. We want to stay, we want to stay in a, uh, uh, in a place of remembrance. And we want to stay effective. And we recognize that the blessing that we've been given, if we want to stay sensitized, if we want us outside of the, what is it, 10 days? I think that's some, 10 days of Christmas, right? 12 days, the 12 days, right? When everybody is having peace on earth and goodwill towards men and being charitable, right? Like I said, and that's, that's our natural disposition. That's what we try to hold on to. So Allah has given us, there's two things that we have. We have our manners and we have our prayer. We have our manners and we have our prayer. So the one says, the one who practices good manners, they attain the same level of virtue as the one who spends their nights in prayer. Doesn't mean that we don't rise up in prayer, you know, in the night. Yes, do it. Get up, make those prayers during the night. But more importantly, understand that that leads you to what? It leads you to good manners. It leads you, and, and good manners is not just please and thank you. Good manners is recognizing the natural, uh, uh, the natural responsibility and order that exists, that should exist in, in, in society. Good manners is also, you see something broken, right? Good manners is seeing something, in, in, that, that Hadith sees something in the road, right? And removing it. Removing it from the road is good actions. Is good actions. So we pray Allah continues to bless us with remembrance. We pray that Allah continues to allow us to give us greater strength and greater capacity to move further upward and uh, move vertically and, and horizontally in this life. And we certainly pray for all those uh, during this time who lack the warmth of remembrance, they lack the warmth of community, we pray Allah protect our remembrance and increase us, inshallah. Rabbana, after our galayna, sabra wa tabra damina wa nsurna ala lukum al kafirin. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. The praise is for Allah, the praise is for Allah, and then the praise is for Allah. As we conclude, as we conclude, I think it's important, it's important for us to remember the, the importance of, of what it means, the expectation of, of having good manners as a Muslim. Uh, during this time, there are going to be, there will be plenty of it, and many of our families are representations of this, where we have families, um, we have families that, that, that observe uh, Christmas, that celebrate Christmas. And I believe Allah has blessed the majority of us because of the experience, because of the leadership uh, that we have been blessed with, uh, and the minds and the hearts that we have, is that we, unlike some, we are not confrontational. Uh, good manners, good manners means, you know, you don't kick over somebody else's stuff, right? And then expect them to respect yours. Uh, for those who, you know, for family members who are celebrating, uh, this is the time, if you have the opportunity to be with your family, be with your family, right? Nobody and nobody really should have had to give anybody permission to do that. This is probably things that we're all already, you know, already doing, 
are aware of. But we understand that the need for Muslims and Muslims with the with clear and sober thinking, it should not be understated. And for those who are in the uh, just paying attention to news and social media, this is the time of year again where everybody uh, who, who wants to, everybody has a, a fatwa to give, everybody has a, uh, there's something that they want to tell you about why you should avoid uh, your, your, your Christian relatives or why you should avoid this or that. Um, and Allah, the relationship that he, that he has given us, our families, we take our cue from who? We take our cue from the examples that Allah has given us. And the examples that he has given us are never ones that's separated, right? That willingly, that their first uh, thought was to separate from their families. The separation only came when they were uh, in thinking of uh, uh, Prophet uh, Ibrahim where, you know, his father tried to, you know, get with him, wanted to get, he's ready to get physical with him, right? No, you're gonna, you're in my house, you're gonna worship what I worship, you're gonna do what I do. Those become the points where you, you make a separation. But alhamdulillah, I think we're in a much, we're in a much better uh, space and time now where as Muslims, we are, our, uh, uh, our views, our faith, it is respected and we respect as good neighbors because Muslims are good neighbors. Muslims are, we just get down the line, whatever, whatever label or point you find uh, uh, the person in society, you check them off that, that you're going to find good Muslims, right? So we are, uh, we are respectful and people are respectful of us, right? We don't separate ourselves from our families. We love our families. Uh, and, and the beautiful thing is we see so many instances of people learning and appreciating Islam. They may never become Muslim, but they have an appreciation and a respect for Islam because of the Muslims that they are in, in, in uh, conversation with. So uh, may Allah continue to bless us to be lights uh, for Islam. May Allah continue to protect us and our families. Uh, may Allah allow this spirit, this warming up to continue, right? This is the part of the goal that we work towards is to be a people that are feeling at all times, uh, not just some of the time. So um, inshallah, if there's been anything, uh, anything of value that has been said, uh, we remember and we, we thank Allah for that. Uh, if there are any errors that have been made, I take responsibility. I ask Allah's forgiveness, I ask your forgiveness, uh, and I ask for short memories always. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحبنا من الغرفة إنك أنت الوهاب.